Hello, this is Bob. I have a latest amazing story for you on Bob Short Stories channel. Matthew, a young and successful entrepreneur, was having a normal day at his office when his phone rang. He smiled when he saw the caller ID. It was Olivia, his beloved fiance, whom he had proposed to six months ago and was planning to marry in a month. He had met her two years ago at a business conference and they had hit it off instantly. She was smart, beautiful, and ambitious, just like him. They shared the same dreams and passions, and he couldn't imagine his life without her. He answered the phone eagerly, expecting to hear her sweet voice and maybe make some plans for the evening. But what he heard instead made his blood run cold. Olivia sounded excited and happy, but not for the reasons he expected. She told him that she had some amazing news for him. She was getting married today to Daniel. Daniel, his best friend since childhood. Daniel, who had been his best man at his first wedding, which had ended in a bitter divorce. Daniel, who had always been there for him, supporting him, encouraging him, and apparently, betraying him. Matthew felt like he had been punched in the gut. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. How could Olivia do this to him? How could Daniel do this to him? They were the two people he trusted and loved the most in the world, and they had stabbed him in the back. He tried to speak, to ask why, to demand an explanation, but no words came out. He was speechless, stunned, and shattered. Olivia didn't seem to notice his silence. She went on, telling him how she and Daniel had fallen in love a few months ago, when Matthew was away on a business trip. She said they had tried to resist their feelings, but they were too strong. She said they had realized that they were meant for each other, and that they couldn't wait any longer. She said they had eloped to Las Vegas, and that they were getting married in a few hours, at a small chapel on the strip. She said she was sorry, but she hoped he would understand. She said she still cared for him, and that she didn't want to hurt him. She said she wanted him to be happy, and to find someone who truly loved him. And then she said something that made Matthew's anger boil over. She said that she and Daniel didn't want to lose him as a friend. She said that he was still important to them, and that they wanted him to be part of their lives. She said that they wanted him to come to their wedding and to celebrate with them. She said that they had already booked a flight for him, and that they would send him the details. She said that they hoped he would accept their invitation, and that they would see him soon. Traitors, thought Matthew, as he hung up the phone. He remembered how just two days ago, he and Olivia had gone to the amusement park and had spent the whole day having fun. He remembered how they had ridden the roller coasters and how Olivia had clung to him, frozen with fear. He remembered how he had kissed her and told her that he loved her and how she had said the same. He remembered how happy they had been, or so he had thought. He felt a surge of pain and bitterness mixed with a burning desire for revenge. But never mind, they'll regret it, he thought as he started to plot his next move. He didn't know yet what he would do, or how he would make them pay, but he knew one thing for sure. He would not let them get away with this. He would not let them ruin his life. He would not let them have their happy ending. Matthew slammed on the brakes, the tires squealing in protest as they came to a stop on the gravel shoulder. His heart was a drum in his chest, each beat echoing the betrayal he felt. His life had turned upside down in the span of a phone call. His meticulously planned future dissolved into a bitter cloud of anger and hurt. He pulled into the parking lot of a small roadside cafe, the neon lights casting a garish glow on the dusty windows. As he stepped out of the car, he noticed a young girl, no more than seven, sitting on a bench. Her eyes, large and filled with a wisdom beyond her years, met his with a piercing gaze. Please buy some flowers. They are very pretty, she said, her voice quiet yet determined. I will sell them cheap. Matthew's bitterness threatened to spill over. He envisioned himself bursting into the church, the bouquet of flowers transformed into a weapon of defiance hurled at the feet of the traitors, Olivia and Daniel. He could almost hear the gasps of the congregation, see the shame in their eyes. But the girl's words, spoken with such innocence and hope, stayed him. He looked out at the flowers, their vibrant colors a stark contrast to the turmoil within him. He saw in their delicate forms a reflection of his own shattered dreams, yet a faint flicker of resilience remained. Perhaps, he thought, there was still beauty to be found in the wreckage of his past. How much are the flowers? He asked, his voice rough with emotion. The girl, her eyes shining with a keen intelligence, regarded him for a moment. I will sell them for whatever you can spare. Matthew reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of bills, more than the flowers were worth. 
He handed them to the girl, her small hand swallowed by the wad of money. Thank you very much, mister, she said, her voice barely a whisper. But this is too much. Go home. You have no business hanging around on the highway. It's not safe. Matthew pressed on, the church where the wedding was to take place looming ahead. He envisioned himself striding in, taking his place near the altar, and launching the bouquet with a flourish, aimed directly at the traders who had called him friend for years. But then, a small piece of paper caught his eye, nestled amidst the vibrant blooms. Unfolding it, he read the message scrawled in large, childish handwriting. Thank you so much. The money will be used to help my sick mother. Matthew's breath hitched. This bouquet, meant for revenge, carried a weight far greater than he'd imagined. He couldn't bring himself to waste it on his anger. Instead, he approached a young woman standing nearby, her eyes filled with curiosity. Why me? She asked, surprised. I'm just a bridesmaid. He simply offered her the flowers, his silence a testament to the profound shift within him. Stepping out of the church, he knew his plans had changed. Now, he had a new mission, to find the girl with the captivating eyes and the sick mother, and offer his help in any way he could. Returning to the roadside cafe, he sought out the waitress. Do you know the name of the girl who sells flowers here? He asked, his voice determined. She lives in a big wooden house at the end of the street. The waitress replied, her name is Samantha. With a newfound sense of purpose, Matthew set off down the road, the bouquet clutched tightly in his hand. The anger that had consumed him was replaced by a warmth that bloomed in his chest. He wouldn't be attending a wedding today, but he was embarking on a journey far more meaningful, one that promised to mend hearts and rewrite the narrative of his own life. Matthew drove home, the weight of his memories pressing down on him. Seven years ago, he had met Isabella, a beautiful young woman with eyes that held an entire universe. They had shared a few incredible, unforgettable days, a whirlwind romance that left him breathless. But life had a way of twisting and turning, and soon, he found himself captivated by Olivia, a new flame that burned bright and hot. Now, fate had led him back to that same street, to that same house. Samantha, the little girl with the wise eyes, was playing with a kitten in the yard. Recognizing him, she called him over, leading him into the house where her mother lay on a bed, her face pale and drawn. As he entered, his eyes met Isabella's. There was a flicker of recognition, a spark in the depths of her gaze. Before he could speak, Samantha piped up, Mama, this is the mister who gave me lots of money for the flowers. He's not a mister, Isabella said softly, her voice weak. He's your father. Shame washed over Matthew in a tidal wave. How could he have been so blind? How could he judge others when his own life was filled with past mistakes? Why didn't you tell me? He asked, his voice raspy with emotion. Isabella's smile was tinged with sadness. I saw how happy you were with Olivia, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. And I didn't want to interfere. Now I'm sick, and my time is short. I can't bear the thought of Samantha going to an orphanage, or worse, to strangers. Matthew knelt beside the bed, his eyes locked on Isabella's. That will never happen, he said, his voice firm with newfound conviction. I'm here now. I'm here for both of you. He knew it wouldn't be easy. He knew the road ahead would be filled with challenges and uncertainties. But for the first time in a long time, he felt a sense of purpose, a reason to fight. He would make amends for his mistakes. He would be the father Samantha deserved, the man Isabella needed. And perhaps, just perhaps, he would finally find his own redemption in the arms of the woman who had always held his heart.